thanks for joining me today. And thanks very much to the organizers for putting together such a great program, such a critical moment. Uh, my name is Chris Honor. I'm an artist, a musician, and a researcher. And I'm gonna be talking to you about an interactive art project I've made for the Our Networks conference, which I'm calling Eigengrau. Uh, you can check out this project in the exhibitions list on the Our Networks program. Uh, it's an interactive project. This is our web, so I encourage you to check either while I'm presenting or after I present. Um, first, I kind of want to introduce this term that I've named the piece after, uh, Eigengrau. Uh, it's a term that's often used to describe a dark gray color, which uh, you're actually seeing in the background of this slide. Uh, so it's a nearly black color, and it is supposedly the color that you see through closed eyelids. So if you close your eyes right now, you're seeing eigengrau. Uh, I've decided to think about this phenomenon of eigengrau in more general terms, and I'm using it in this piece to think about the things that are perceived in the absence of vision. What happens when we withdraw from our visual orientation in the world. Whoops, my screen share disappeared. One second. Um, oh dear. Here we go. Uh, yeah, what, what happens when we kind of withdraw from our visual orientation in the world? And I, I found this to be a particularly interesting question when we're thinking about the internet, which is, of course, a primarily visual medium. And I want to use this term to think about how we can imagine an internet that emphasizes a completely different modality around which we might experience a sense of connection with others. And so I've chosen this word, Eigengrau, to encapsulate the piece, which is essentially an internet platform that requires its users to close their eyes and withdraw from the uh, visual spectacle of the web in order to interact with others. So the project I've created is an interactive web app that asks its users to activate their webcams. Uh, once the webcam is activated, a face tracking algorithm detects the user's eyes and draws the outline of the eyes to the browser window. And when the user closes their eyes, a unique audible tone is generated, which can be modulated slightly as the user moves their head from left to right. And when the user opens their eyes, the tone stops. Now, when other users access this app at the same time, their eyes are also rendered to the screen. And each individual user produces a note that is broadcast to every other connected user, resulting in this sort of collectively played organ that's played simultaneously by different people who are closing their eyes in front of their devices. So, in a sense, all of the connected users are collectively resisting these markets of visual attention that ordinarily characterize the web. And instead, we have this moment where people are kind of appreciating this meditative instance shared with other people that is rendered audibly as this kind of drifting drone of harmonized tones. And uh, Henry, I'll just get you to play that first video. It's just an example uh, of what this sounds like and what this looks like.
Okay, thanks. So uh, this is something, again, you can try this out on your own computers as long as you have your um, webcam activated. Um, and I want to talk for a second uh, about some of my earlier artworks and how this project sort of fits into my broader artistic research. Uh, I've long been interested in using my art practice to rethink the conventional affordances of popular technologies and to imagine kind of alternate modalities by which we might encounter creativity or discovery or connection using electronic media. And I want to show this piece of mine from 2009 that I called Organ. In this piece, I've interfaced a brainwave detecting headset, which you can see the person in the foreground is wearing, uh, and that is connected to a 1970s electric organ, which you can see in the background. And I had outfitted this organ with actuators that would pull down the keys according to the user's brainwave activity. And so the sensor was configured to detect alpha waves, which are a particular uh, electrical frequency that's generated by the brain uh, that normally indicates a state of relaxation or meditation. Uh, and this is opposed to beta or gamma waves, which you can see here, which are indicative of heightened states of attention, brainwave states that would be more typical when engaging with some kind of information overload. And so when a state of meditation is detected via alpha waves using this sensor, the organ produces a more complex and tuneful arpeggio. Uh, and so in organ, as well as in Eigengrau, the piece I'm showing at this conference, the idea is that user is rewarded for withdrawing from the heightened levels of attention that interactive technologies typically afford. And as such, these are interfaces that are designed to resist rather than capitalize upon economies of attention. And I'll just show you a, a quick video of this piece in action. Uh, Henry, you can cue that up now. The idea is it's an organ that produces music um, that kind of corresponds with a moment you kind of disengage from the attention economy and tune into a different form of engagement via listening. Um, another piece I want to briefly touch on of my other recent works is called Pure Water Touching Clear Sky. Uh, in this work, I installed a garden of tropical plants in a dark windowless room in a gallery. The plants are outfitted with grow lights and water pumps. Uh, those lights and pumps are activated by Twitch users who can then watch a live feed of the garden and enter commands into the chat that uh, sort of allow them to collectively take care of the plants. And so with this piece, I was really inspired by the Twitch Plays Pokemon phenomenon in which thousands of Twitch users collectively controlled a game interface all at the same time. And this kind of ecological notion of democracy was very interesting to me, this idea that through the opposing forces of saboteurs and earnest enthusiasts, a balance could be struck that sustains some kind of progress. And so I thought I would apply the same kind of approach to the sustenance of a living system. 
And so for me, this piece tries to place the politics of interaction and causality to a more direct focus. So users can see the results of their contributions in real time. They could see that when they enter a command into the chat, water starts to flow or light start to change. And for me, this became a way of acknowledging the sorts of touches that are made across networks through what I would call a politics of care. It introduces this sort of tactile modality into the internet, which so often is presented to us as just a flurry of words and images. And so I want to tie this back uh, to the piece that I'm presenting here, Eigen Grau, since with each of these projects, the notion of other internets is kind of being played with. And it seems to me that this idea of the possibility of different internets is really crucial to the discussions that go on at this conference, since there are myriad motivating factors in wanting a different internet. It's clear that platform capitalism has sort of wrought an oppressive and hierarchical order upon the once open networks upon which we communicate and on which we live, and that major platforms have really seized upon the potential for free and democratic exchanges online and instead sort of funnel our experiences towards commodified ends, especially towards the ceaseless generation of ad revenue. And so it's clear that in the isolating circumstances that have been brought about by the coronavirus pandemic, that there is an increased need for technologies that generate a meaningful, actual sense of connection with others. And it's also clear that the spaces for connection that are provided by monopolistic social media platforms do a pretty poor job of creating a pure sense of intimacy. They create spaces that are cluttered with noise, that are driving our attention towards so many things at once, and these Moments of connection are often framed by the economic narratives of platforms. And so with Eigengrau, I wanted to create a more pure sense of intimacy between users. When each user closes their eyes and hears the sound, uh, as well as the sound of other people, there's this acknowledgement that somewhere at the end of the line, there's another person who is sharing this meditative moment of pause with their eyes closed at the same time. And so with the piece that I've presented, closing one's eyes becomes this really deliberate act of shutting out the noise. Users are closing their eyes to the sort of hyper attentive standard of contemporary web interfaces. Uh, furthermore, this sort of slow droning tones generated by the app are kind of asking the user to focus on more textural nuances rather than providing some sort of instant gratification. So in rendering interactions as harmonized tones, the project is seeking to kind of shift away from visual textual modalities and instead tries to shift towards more nonverbal tactile forms of acknowledgement. And so the act of listening to harmony of two or more tones that are at the same time distinct from one another, but also together, this becomes a way of orienting oneself within a network of understanding one's sort of contingent position in relation to uh, a multiplicity of actors. And when this sort of philosophical notions of networked ontologies and uh, interactions, to borrow a term from Karen Barad, when these things come up, they remind me a lot of the experience of listening to and participating in experimental drone-based harmonic music. And I think 
of pieces like this that we see this image of by Lamont Young and Marianne Zazila called Dream House. And uh, this is something you might have visited if you've been in uh, New York City. Uh, it's an installation where there are four precisely tuned sine waves that are being amplified into a space. And visitors to the space not only experience the kind of complex harmonic intersections of those four tones, but they also hear uh, in an incredibly nuanced way, the way that their own bodies and the qualities of the space itself impact the way those tones reflect and intersect. It's an incredibly rich and informative experience, yet it's an experience that contains no words or no direct symbolic imagery. It's merely a study of the intersection of frequencies of light and sound and bodies in a space. Uh, likewise, I think about the work of Pauline Oliveros, uh, who was well known for developing an improvisational technique known as deep listening. Uh, in a deep listening exercise, a group of participants generates a piece of music not by following some kind of determined structure or taking direction from a leader, but instead by actively listening and letting that act of listening orient each individual towards the more holistic direction of the group. And so in this sense, the group of improvisers tunes itself not to a single fixed reference point, but always in relation to every other individual in the group. And they all together find through this deliberate act of nuanced listening, a collectively reached point of balance. And uh, Henry, I'm gonna ask you to play that clip that played just now by accident now. So this is an example of one of Pauline Oliveros's tuning meditations being performed by an improv group in Nova Scotia. And the thing about this piece that gets me sort of excited when thinking about networks and thinking about harmony is that in a performance like this, there's so much rich information and coordination and cooperation that are established totally without a centralized director or conductor. And it, it seems to me that if we are going to be thinking about the ways in which networks can be reimagined as decentralized or distributed systems, that the rich experiences that are generated by pieces of music such as this might have quite a lot to tell us. And as you can see with the performance uh, performers in this piece, uh, the first step might be to sort of close our eyes and listen. And so that's sort of what I'm going to leave you with here. Uh, with Eigengrau, I've obviously not set out to make some kind of new internet platform that has any practical viability. Uh, instead, my goal here is to afford audiences a more poetic experience of what the internet might feel like. It was focused away from visual and textual noise and instead towards a slower, more tactile, more intimate modality. And my hope is that the value of that experience might somehow shape the way that we think about the design of new networks. So thanks for listening. Uh, please check out the project. It's again in the program for our networks. 
under the exhibitions. Uh, you can also look at it as URL. Uh, there's time for questions. I'm happy to answer any. Thanks a lot.